every country develops in its own way. And I think what's happening to Kenya is, is unique. Um, I think that we, Kenya has now uh, reached a stage where we've had it good for, for about 40 years. Um, there are many issues that we should have dealt with. We are very lucky people uh, as Kenyans. We have a beautiful country, beautiful weather, the best weather in the world. Uh, and very good people, you know. We're not uh, inclined to take up arms against each other. Uh, Kigafla, as people say. Uh, this part of Africa is a rough neighborhood. You know, it's, it's, it's difficulties in Somalia. Uh, there, there were difficulties in Ethiopia, Rwanda. There were difficulties for a long time in Uganda, as you know. Um, and you know, we took that for granted um, as Kenyans. Uh, and perhaps you know, we took it for granted for for too long. And now we mean you know the events of the last elections, uh, but not only the last elections, but. Um, you know, these, the, the trend that we've seen with regard to youth and criminalization and violence around elections that has been, you know, bubbling since the early 1990s that came to a head in 2007 has caused us, some of us, I would say, especially you to snap out of it and uh, to, into a new reality. So we're blinking in the, in, the sun, in the sunlight. We're like people who've been wearing shades for 40 years and somebody's taken off the shades. I wasn't surprised by the violence um, because ever since the reintroduction of multi-party politics, we've had violence of one kind or the other. Um, usually, in my opinion, and from the reports that I have read, um, violence that is directed by uh, people around the president. Uh, what was unique in 2007 is that it, the violence reached a point where in certain parts of the country it became very spontaneous. Uh, even those members of the uh, elite who would have benefited from the violence, I think, lost control over, over it. And a lot of the simmering resentments uh, and uh, issues that uh, we have uh, left unaddressed um, for all those years came bursting into the, uh, into the sunlight. So that was the shocking element. The violence itself was not shocking. What was surprising was the extent to which it was spontaneous and self-driven in certain parts of the country. Usually, uh, violence in Kenya radiates outwards from state house. Uh, that is our history. It's possible for people to talk themselves into a war, where you make it a self-fulfilling kind of thing, where everybody says, oh, 2012 is going to be worse than 2007 because we haven't done this, we haven't done that. Uh, but the only people who can stop it is us, uh, as Kenyans. So what happens in 2012 is, is up to us. I tell people that we have a gloom industry in Kenya now. It has become uh, a fully-fledged industry. It's well-funded. Uh, it has some very articulate people who spend a lot of time saying how bad things are and how we're going to have a war and how maybe a war may even be a good thing, some people say, that we finish what we started so that we can have, start from a clean slate. Uh, these are demented kind of uh, views that uh, people are putting out. What really uh, is uh, going to happen in 2012 is very much dependent on us. Not only at this national level of these, um, of the government, you know, you know, and its task forces, commissions, uh, and all those projects that we hear about and read about. But what we as Kenyans do uh, between each other.